customers has come to us and is, uh, we're working on these uh, Allen Bradley PLCs. In this particular application, we're using Control Logic 5570 series PLCs. So what we've got, our application is we, we need to be able to transfer data to and from a single uh, control logics to a redundant pair control logics. And the connection has to be to be able to tolerate drops in network connectivity and also when the primary and secondary PLCs switch over due to a CPU fault, for example. Uh, Allen Bradley PLCs use the CIP protocol and in Studio 5000 you'll have the MSG or message instruction which the Allen Bradleys use. In terms of the logic, this will be a example logic to generate or to execute your message instruction. Of importance is the input to the message instruction. So on the transition of logic from off to on, the message instruction is executed by a message queue. And there's three flags which you can see in the logic, which is the enable, the done and the error bits. In normal operation, we're looking for the done bit, right? Because that means successful message is being processed. An error bit obviously means there's something wrong with the message instruction. In terms of a network layout, it might be that the destination PLC is not reachable. So we'll get this error flag or error bit will be set. So the question comes, what happens when we get the error bit? What do we do? So in this situation, we have two timers which are controlling the speed or the interval between uh, message execution. So we have a one second timer for normal operation and a 10 second timer when there's a problem with the message instruction. In this case, we can see that when there is an error problem with the, the message instruction, these two timers will not actually be in sync with each other. Therefore, the done bits for each timer won't be in sync. Therefore, this message instruction will never be able to transition to off to on. Bear in mind this part is no longer available. So the question is, how do we get this message to execute again on the state of an error? A better layout of logic is for the enable in of the message instruction is to, instead of having the timer done bits in, in series, they're now in parallel. So then when there is an error with the message instruction, T2 will separately control the re-execution of the message instruction. Um, once the message instruction is back to a healthy state, then timer two will no longer be needed and timer one will again control the execution of the message.